So, you've been waiting endlessly for months and months and months and months and months for the car of your dreams. Or a Nissan Patrol or a Toyota Kluger, whatever. I mean, life's not perfect. The dealer rings you on the day before delivery, like Jesus H. Christ, and says, that's going to be three grand extra, take it or leave it. The mafia does business this way. What do you do? I'm John Cadogan from AutoExpert.com.au and I get new cars cheap for buyers here in Australia. Website for that, obviously. Or you can just click the card that's, you know, up there now, dude. Or it might be sometime in the next 12 to 18 months. We're really not sure at the moment. It's unprecedented. So yesterday, I get this email from a dude named Luke Maslin, and I think it pertains to just so many people out there with their patience fraying to, like, wafer thin, waiting for their new car after having paid a deposit, you know, geological time ago. And it goes like this. I ordered a Toyota Kluger through you in October. Well, thank you, Luke. And I was given six months as the probable delivery date. As that time is fast approaching, I would value your thoughts on the following which happened to a friend of mine today. He ordered a Nissan Patrol. Sorry to hear that. Although it is one of the two Nissans that I would countenance buying, I'd have to say that. And it is very good value compared with the Land Cruiser. So, anyway, he ordered that back in April of 2021 and was told it should arrive in November. Porky's coming up, I think. It was delayed... And a fortnight ago, he was informed the car would be delivered today, 28th of February, 2022. This morning, the dealer called to say that Nissan had raised their prices and he would need to sign a new contract. Bastards. And pay an additional 3,000 bucks. Like Jesus H. Keyreist. The mafia does business this way. He'd have to pay an additional 3000 bucks if he still wanted it. Like, signs of papers, old man. He paid up. He didn't feel as if he had much choice. Yeah. <laughs> Waiting until the day to sting him for an extra three grand appears unethical. You think? I can only imagine how the poor bastard felt. Like, perhaps he was experiencing Stockholm Syndrome and just loved the dealer for finally getting him his car. We'll never know. Surely this price had been known about for some time while over the past 10 months, well, certainly for the past couple of months, I'd suggest, this seems more like a ransom. Given the decision was sprung on my friend at the last no more. Yeah, I don't want... Oh, Mr. Bain. I don't want a last-minute price rise happening to me. Who does? If there is to be a price rise for my car, at what point should the dealer let me know? I think it would be reasonable. They inform me as soon as any price rise is decided. Yeah, me too. So I have the option to cancel the contract and go car shopping elsewhere. Yeah, but the flip side of that is you go back on the end of the queue and you get to wait another 12 to 18 months for your car. Is there anything illegal about what happened in my friend's case on the last day? I don't think so. I'm wondering if there is a cutoff point closer to the delivery date after which the dealer cannot raise the price of the car. I would be most grateful for your thoughts. Regards, Luke Maslin. Okay, so Commerce 101, all right? Yes! Commerce 101 says that you offer a price and they agree to it, and then you sign a contract and the deal is done. And then there are terms and conditions, like clauses, right? So one of the clauses in the contract is a, quote-unquote, subject-to-list-price-increase clause, all right? So that means if there is a big fat weight, and then the importer puts up the price of the vehicle and the dealer has to pay this elevated price at the wholesale level for that vehicle, then he gets to pass that on to you. And, of course, you get to go, nah, dude, I'm not paying that, and then the deal falls over, 
and presumably you get your deposit back. But it really does depend on the terms and conditions of the contract, which is why you should read that stuff and also why you should pass it by your solicitor if you don't understand any of it, particularly in the current market. Now, maybe it's going to cost your solicitor, well, maybe it's going to cost you three or four hundred bucks for your solicitor to take the time to read that contract and red flag any issues for you, but it's probably worth it if you've got a couple of grand on the line. Who knows? Anyway, that's a value judgment that you have to make, right? Now, my investigation, which involved going to redbook.com.au, which is a great uh, historical reference guide to the list price of vehicles, it shows me that in December, I think it was, of 2021, so just a few months ago, three months ago or so, Nissan did have a price rise increase in the list price of petrol. But according to my research, and I'll put it up on the screen there, right, so you can see it, the base model, the TI, went up from $81,160 by $1,000 to $82,160, and the top spec PIMPS TIL went up from $94,115 to $95,115. So I don't know where this $3,000 list price increase came from. I'd also suggest that that $1,000 price rise is also subject to things like stamp duty and luxury car tax, okay? And they would be proportional increases, but you're not going to get from $1,000 to $3,000 based on that. So I don't know where the $3,000 came from, and that's probably outside the terms of the contract, subject to the accuracy of Red Book's figures, all right? So that does seem to be a breach of the contract to me. Okay, but I haven't seen your friend's particular contract. Okay, so this is basically just one of those things that we all have to roll with because car makers, dealers, car makers, importers, you order a car today, they can't tell you generally when it's going to be built. They go, they try and get some sense of it from the breeze, you know, but they really don't know in a great many cases. So, my strong advice to you is just wait, dude. And I know this is like counterproductive to my uh, underlying business here of getting new cars cheap. You know, just click the link up there now, dude. But the best thing you can do in this market when they don't know when the car's going to be built, right? They really don't know in a great many cases. And they can't tell you the friggin' price. So the when and the price are kind of critical aspects to any commercial transaction. Like, if a property developer can't tell you when your new office is going to be built and can't tell you how much it's going to cost, would you sign a contract to buy it? I'm, I guess some people would, I probably wouldn't. And obviously everybody has different needs when it comes to cars. Some people can afford to wait and some people need a car now. Like, if you're out there in traffic and it's been so friggin' wet on the eastern seaboard of Australia since, I don't know, months. There's probably a lot of fender benders at the moment. There's probably a lot of cars getting written off and there's probably a lot of people who need a replacement car now. And if that's you, then you do, in a sense, have your head in a vice in terms of your need for a new car. If you're one of those people, my advice to you is be flexible, okay? Be as flexible as possible on make, model, spec, color, powertrain, all of that stuff. Because the more flexible you are in terms of all of that, the more likely it is that we'll be able to find you a car quickly, okay? And that shit really matters to some people. Now, if you've got this vague idea of upgrading because you want a new car, but you don't need one, then just wait. And I suspect this situation will start to ease over the next 12 months. That's, that's the sense of it I get from talking to industry insiders, okay? But queuing up to buy a car in an environment where they don't know, where demand exceeds supply and they can't tell you the price or the delivery date. Like, this is just a living consumer hell that you don't need to be in. However, I would, A, verify the magnitude of the list price increase before signing any other contract, right? Because there is that clause and they don't get to randomly just pump up the price because they feel like it they get to pump up the price 
according to a list price increase from the manufacturer. And at least according to the figures on Redbook, the price rise on Patrol was $1,000, not three. So I don't know where the additional two grand came from, but, you know, we, all, we also are playing Chinese whispers to an extent, aren't we? Because it's the friends relayed version of events then sent to me by an email. So I'm not aware of the facts in this matter. Maybe it was just 1,000 bucks. Who knows? But anyway, I would verify the amount of the list price increase and I would acknowledge that that could be subject, will be subject to stamp duty and might be subject to luxury car tax if the car is worth more than whatever it is, 60 or 70 grand or something. But I wouldn't be paying more than that. And the other thing I would say here is that dealers and manufacturers have an investment in the relationship that they have with you. At least the good ones do. So in this situation of a list price increase, there should be some negotiable aspect to that. And it should be based on the value of your relationship with the car maker because you're in this for the next few years, right? And you're going to pay for servicing and parts and things of that nature. And then at the end of all of this, you might go again with them or a different manufacturer. So if you pointed out to that dealer that if he is going to bend you over like this, then you are going to shop around on servicing and you probably won't buy another Nissan for as long as you live because this is the textbook way to leave a bad taste in someone's mouth off the bat. And pro tip, you've already been patient and waited for more than six months to take delivery of this car. And let's face it, it's not really that special. It's just an appliance when you're buying cars of this nature. Okay, so there's nothing really that special about a Patrol or a Kluger or whatever. They're tools to do the family job, whatever that is, recreationally or just logistically around town, okay? So this is up for grabs, your ongoing relationship with them. And they should man up, in my view, and just go, you know what, we'll meet you halfway. We'll make it 1500 bucks. We'll make it a 1000 bucks. Our hands are tied, but we'll cop some of this on the chin because we're in it with you. At the moment, the conversation from dealers is like, take it or leave it. And that is mafia-esque and, in my view, totally unacceptable.